Kutam Milunudi Zuamid. Welcome one and all to the delightful little dirt hole that we're currently referring to as... Hammerlock. It's been a couple of episodes since I've had the breathing room to greet you properly in the introduction. I must be improving. So yes, how on my dimension of destiny are you all? Oh, that's awful to hear. Uh, but you know what they say. You can't make an omelette. Moods are dipping down. Seeing far too many jaundiced faces. Uh, more than the usual for a civilization of alcoholics, I mean. I thought about maybe having some sort of religious holiday. Get the pious little blighters on their knees in the quills of shearing but it's such a tiny little temple. Now I know it's not the size of the temple, it's the worshippers you're filling with them, but that's sort of my point. We could pack them in like sardines, but the smell would be comparable. We're outgrowing our home. And like the humble hermit crab, must prepare a replacement Whilst we're all imagining a dwarven decapod conga line, I'll draw your attention to Moses, who's gone into a strange mood. Now, Moses came in on one of the recent migrant waves. He's one of those background dwarves who are the backbone to any backwoods, and not backwoods, dwarven fortress. His skills lie in leatherworking, so we're getting another one of those clothing artefacts. Safe to say I've had enough of the bloody clothing artefacts with our dress and mask. But it does beat another great. Ugh, let's give him a minute. <gasps> and Moses has created a leather... Face veil. Can you make a veil out of something that thick? And after the dress with rock spikes on it, this style of bridal paraphernalia is suggesting one hell of a weird wedding. He's named it Lytast Dalzat Bithcest Gemsit. Torch matched the triangular pastime. That better not be a dirty thing, Moses. Taking a closer look at it, it's clear it's not a veil at all. No, what you've made there, Moses, is a bloody blindfold. That looked like my granny's front flap. Graham, I'm going to need more words in that sentence, please. Remembering that I am recording. She wears it when she's cooking. Oh, an apron. Uh, yes, I suppose it does, doesn't it? Uh, what can I do for you, anyways? Snodford wants soup. Ah, bloody pain in my bummies. Third door on the left after the custard room. I grab one of the ladles, though. I've not been able to source enough material for a bathing suit that'll fit you, and until I do, you're not to enter the pool. Yours are not the type of croutons I want floating in there. Oh, speak her name and she shall appear. Oh, and disappear. Damn kobolds. Oh. My. Me. We are welcoming new life into the world. It turns out that Doren, uh, yes, Doren, not Doren, has given birth to a little girl. Oh, damn, were we witness to a crossbow wedding? Hm, explains an awful lot, doesn't it? Here she is, though, little Techard Bridge Flicker. Uh, Tekard means pick. A bridge in this context is the bridge of the nose, and it's flicker as the noun, or someone who flicks. The perfect name for a little girl who mines for nose gold, but isn't as disgusting as to eat it. Adorable little thing. Clever too. In her own words, she is... Da Baba. Ah, here's Meng. Oh, for the love of me, this again? We've barely the dwarves for a good crossbow-tossing tourney. Why would you possibly think we'd want to become an official land of the realm? 
So, no, you can snod off. I mean, really, can you imagine? Welcome, Baron, to your new realm. Here's your three furniture cell. Get two. There's a lot of boulders to shift. Nonsense. At least with Meng comes the traders. I'm not going to show you the trading, of course. Far too dull. Suffice to say, it's prepared meals for ingredients again. We're turning into the Uber Eats of the Dimension of Destiny. Scratch that, we're bloody Primark. Here you can see Ast has gone into a strange mood. She's an adequate weaver, so we're getting something made from the clothiers' workshop again. This is Dwarf Fortress, though it wouldn't surprise me if we ended up with a woolly mug. Contradiction is the byword. Exemplified by Ast's disdain of cooperation whilst seeking harmony. Ugh, I made one comment about clothing artefacts. Clearly I need to be more careful with my godly invocations. Or more intelligent. Oh, let me tell you what I've really never seen. A very valuable weapon artefact, uh, made from a material you would normally attribute to a weapon, I'm looking at you, Bistoclebees, uh, that really hammers the competition and nails the cultural importance of dwarven relics. Yeah, that should do it. Here we have it then, Iton Rotik, a llama wool dress that is once again being gifted to the fortress. Whoopee! Its name translates to Hall Nettle, H-A-L-L, -L, which I believe is a misspelling on Ast's part, as she's a weaver, not a wordsmith. The name pertains to the fact that the dress is apparently very itchy, like hauling nettles. When even the creator thinks it's rubbish, what's the point in keeping it? We never talk about it, but despite the possessed nature of the dwarves, surely some spirits find themselves controlling a meat sack that just isn't capable. Just imagine a workbench surrounded by screwed up stone tablets with unworkable designs scrawled on them. My point is that the fact we end up with a product at the end of all strange moods, or all those strange moods where we have the materials, is incredibly... Well, strange. Regardless, thank you asked, uh, I suppose. <coughs> the released by Snod, not actually forgotten beast in Yuri Afachi has come. Oh, and bless it, it looks like it hasn't eaten in weeks. Here it is in the caverns, flapping around in the water, and... Ah, oh, bloody thing. Ah, here it is. Got into a fight with a war jabberer, of all things. Look at the blood. I wonder where it could have gone. Oh, poor beast. That's it. Slink off to lick your... Oh, looks like it's found the fishman. It... It's ripping them apart. Oh my me, it didn't struggle at all. Yes, go, Winyuri, the watchbird of Hammerlock. No official position, my third armpit. Where's Meng? Winyuri for Baron. Here's a sight we've seen a few times before. It's Scooped Stick. Now, I've noticed that our wool trusses are still on the grumpy side, because they have yet to actually fight anything. So where better to send our green squad than the location our barricaded nails have already repeatedly trampled? Now, we're going to get them to pillage to ensure a bit of fighting, but we don't want any more half-eaten sandwiches or family pets. So we'll set them to take only important treasures. Me knows what constitutes an important treasure to a dwarf. Again, I mean that literally. But I'm hopeful that the sandwiches will at least be fresh. Farewell, wall trusses. Do ensure you come back with your lunch, not on it. <laughs> and they're back. Seeing as Avaz is empty-handed, I'm going to assume Scoopstick has been reduced to eating salads. 
We'll leave the militia captain to his nap and take a look at the pillaging, shall we? The walled trusses found their way to Scoopstick, okay? Whereupon Avaz put forth a sound plan, though ended up with no positional advantage. Really does seem as though we've flattened the place, doesn't it? Our dwarves clashed with nine humans, slew the lot of them, and then searched the area and found nothing to nick. Well, it's disappointing, but I suppose we got the fighting that we wanted done? A thought occurs that what with the humans we've killed in raids and the siege, Scoopstick may only have been garrisoned by the old, infirm, and children. Stop the ride, please. I think I may want to get off. Then again, I've still not seen a human child. Perhaps they hatch fully grown. Please, me, let that be the case. Good work, uh, possible monsters. Uh, we'll have to get the two squads consolidated now that the wall trusses are blooded. Let them train together for a few months whilst we build a hammerlock guard. It's a hard life being an all-powerful deity. Ah, but not, it would appear, as hard a life as our dwarves are having. It would seem that the humans are back. This time I'm not doing anything so namby-pamby as a parley. Nice as it would be to clear the fortress of a couple of dresses. This should be something to watch. I've sent the newly doubled barricaded nails the order to make for the hilltop, and it shouldn't take long for them to arrive. And the humans trickle in. Here come the dwarves. Oh, some rough fighting. Damn, I see injuries already and we've barely begun. Someone's lost a mace. That can't be good. Damn it, Alter Snot. The fighting's continuing on that rise. Who bloody filmed this? It looks to be... No. Now it looks... No. Yes. It's over. And the cost... Raoul is dead. Our original expedition leader. The dwarf who led us to this site. The barricaded nails are frozen in shock at the loss of one of their own. Oh, wait, no, I ordered them to stand there, didn't I? Well, let's send them back to the fortress. Yes, there they go. Oh, look at this mess. Now, let's see how bad the damage is. Nobody at the hospital yet? Hmm. I wonder if perhaps just poor Raoul was unlucky. Oh, looks as though a cat may have got caught up in the fighting. Oh, snod. So it looks as though Law took a tumble during the fighting and is now in the river with her cat. Should probably do something about this, but I don't think we should worry too much. Some work of magic appears to be keeping that stretch of river shallower than its surrounding parts. But that's dwarven physics for you. We'll get the wall here mined out. And now channeled for the access. There we go. Off to the hospital with you now, Law. With any luck, your moggy will find her way out too. What a mess. And the world continues to turn, as far as Carol here cares anyway. He's gone into a strange mood, and I was in half a mind to ignore it. Bigger things to worry about and all that. But two things caught my eye. One is his name, Blowsack. Writing a joke about that seems almost like cheating. The more important thing is that what we have here is a weaponsmith, albeit a novice. He has, however, taken over the forge, so I think we can safely assume we won't be getting a dress. Add to that the steel he's working with, and I can safely say I am quietly excited. Zaneg Stokid Ushesh Teshkad Right, before I translate this, let me just remind you of something I said earlier. 
A very valuable weapon artifact, uh, made from a material you would normally attribute to a weapon. I'm looking at you, Pistoclopes. Uh, that really hammers the competition and nails the cultural importance of dwarven relics. Relic impaled the imprisonment of pricing. It's a hammer. It's made of steel. And despite pricing being in the name, it's only made of steel, so it's worth next to nothing as artifacts go. The only artifact you could have designed to better kick me in the teeth would have been a boot. Keep your nose clean, Mr. Blowsack, and I'll be watching you. Uh, which would sound insidious if it weren't my whole business model. Actually, seeing as you decided to keep that hammer for yourself, you can take the place of one of our injured dwarves in the military. Enjoy swinging that around. Here you can see the coffin I've got ready for Ral. Ignore the thing dragging itself through the temple, that Zooglar, Law's cat that took a tumble off the hill with her. It's injured, but we don't have a vet, and uh, just ignore it. So yes, Ral's tomb. Unlike Shorast, we can recover his body, so there's no need for a slab. At least you'd think not, but for whatever reason, nobody has bothered to drag him in here. I don't know if it's because I've got the tomb overlapping with the temple, or if it's just that nobody really liked him. He was a bit grumpy towards the end, after all. No funeral, either. Seems weird to set one up with his body still fertilising the hillside. And if he really was as popular as Mumps, it just seems a waste of time. Minkot seems... happy to stare at it anyway. Broking seems to have broken her. Ha 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 ha! Oh damn, you never do catch the funniest things on camera. Here you can see our new expedition leader, Moldath, unconscious in a tree. Into which he was flung when another tree was brought down near him. Oh, there he is waking up now can't say there's anything funnier than a serious leader stuck in a tree and Moldath is as serious as they come. Oh, somebody has arrived to help? Minkot? Oh, that is Minkot, right? Cloaks appear to have been a bad idea for recognition purposes, but that must be Minkot, because after diving daringly into the tree, she's decided to just sit there like a lemon. Oh, which is extra weird, as this is bitter orange country. Ah, thank you, Udib. Yes, I'd been waiting for him to get around to cutting the tree down. Now Moldath can get himself to the hospital. Right hand mangled beyond recognition. Can't say I could have picked it out of a lineup anyway. Rub some dirt into it, that dwarf. Oh, damn, he's still not been seen to. Think the reshuffles have messed some of the doctors up? Bear with me. Kept in a Tupperware box very clearly labelled until recently, Beast Telling Lervildang has come. Uh, one of my mineral monsters. I was especially proud of the way his ramming dome came out. Polished the damn thing for hours. Snodford says... Hang on, you can't just keep barging in. I'm working. Oh, bummis, where'd Telling go? Ah, there it is now. Oh, me. It's a Nure. We've got a beast off! Wow, look at Telling firing off those webs. Won't help you much, and Nure can rip through them like paper. Yes, you see? And it's over. And Nure continues to be Hammerlock's protector. Now, what did you want, Graham? Snodford says don't use the spinny straw, cause he used it yesterday and now he's gone all gloopy. Don't use the spiral straw. Yes. My spiral straw. Yes. My spiral straw that I am in fact using right now. Yes. Thank you, Graham. Close the door on your way out, please. I don't want to be gloopy. 
Kuda is here. Uh, the humans sure do have a large contingent of barely competent traders, don't they? Is it not usually a vocation one would stick to? It's a little worrisome that this one also seems to be more war-inclined. Really starting to draw my attention away from Scooped Stick and toward the settlements of the Oled Mong. Well, how can we see it as anything but veiled aggression? Uh, though not quite that veiled. Oh look, the cat problem dealt with itself, and in the habit of cats everywhere, it did so in the most disgusting and appalling way possible. That's it, Zugla, stink out the sweetness of Rax, make sure all the dwarves are as annoyed as possible. Would somebody please remove this fetid moggy from the tavern? Ah, Meng is back, but that means the traders shouldn't be far behind. Oh, and look, he's gone directly to the tavern this time. I suppose they can learn. Oh, for the love of everything me-shaped, how many times do we have to say no to you, Meng? We don't want to be a stupid bloody official land of the realm. Just get out. No, no temple for you. Go on, get. And you can take your unease with you. You try running a fortress bloodless with humans landing atop you every five minutes. Opinionated little nitwit. It's enough to make me sick. Ha! Speak of the beast. The only wish he was forgotten, beast no core of Zenor, has come. A bad memory I managed to excise of my first experience with truly foreign cuisine. Here he is scampering around the... Why do they continue doing this? Wait, it seems to be fighting something. It's gone. No idea where, but we're following Anyore now because I have a feeling our feathered friend may have done in for the snaily sick boy. We can but hope, anyway. All hail Baron Anyore, our beaky defender. Now I was just about to bring things to an end here when Vutok went into a strange mood. She's an adept clothier, so she's using the clothier's workshop. We appear to be back to our regular hammerlock artifacts. Boo. We'll use this time to say our goodbyes and take a look at what she makes at the end. Sound good? So yes, that's it for another fortnight. As you've probably gathered, Snodford is sick and has been sick for a few weeks now, so his just the tip will be on hiatus for the foreseeable. I, however, hold myself to a higher standard and come rain, shine or snotty dribbles, shall continue to infect your face holes with my crazed gibbering. Oh, here we go. Vutok has created Ubaznisan. Some cave spider silk trousers. They're worth twice what the hammer was because they're apparently sticky and she's dragged them through the stockpiles. As I live and gurgle. Anyway, that's enough of that nonsense. Thank you all so much for watching and Anu Zeshon, you most wonderful of individuals. Anu Zeshon. Graham, can I have... As you, he's going to go get me my slippers, aren't you? Well, he can get my hot water bottle at the same time. He already got you your soup, don't be so... That was ages ago. Graham! Graham. I am thinking the rent is too high in this place.